Uh, well, uh, no, 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 no. I haven't, haven't seen her. I, I'm afraid. And now I'd really love to stay, but, but I really must be getting my mother settled in. She's had a long journey, and and you know what mothers can be like. Oh yes, oh yes, indeed I do, Mr. Nickleby," declared the Prime Minister with a knowing nod. Well, I trust you will have a pleasant stay on Banania. Now, if you'll excuse me. And off he went, peering into the distance, in eager anticipation of Her Majesty's warship. Nigel intercepted Larry, lugging the luggage along the marina's footpath. Larry, whispered Nigel, you did turn off the identifier signal before we got there, didn't you? Because this grand reception here, all these people and the band, I'm expecting a British destroyer which should be here at any minute. HMS Diamond. Does that sound in any way familiar, Larry? Oh, well, me, of course, of course, yes, yeah, well, no, may, maybe I did, yeah, maybe, maybe, spluttered Larry, turning pale as he realised what had happened, and dropping the luggage at Nigel's feet, scurried furtively back to the boat to turn off the offending signal. Nigel, what a fine young woman she is, said his mum, as Nigel finally caught up with her. Oh, I'm happy you found yourself a girlfriend at last, Nigel. <laughs> well, I wouldn't, wouldn't actually call her a, a girlfriend, exactly, muttered Nigel, looking at his feet, then glancing nervously at Lily Dobson. Well, she, she, she may be from Australia or somewhere, but, but still she obviously has a mind of her own and would be very good for you, Nigel. Nigel! Nigel! Nigel had stopped, aghast, horrified at the thought of being in any way attached to Paige Payne of all people. Later that evening, when Nigel had gone home and his mum had gone to bed, the girls were sitting around chatting, when suddenly Paige and Lily heard a terrified scream coming from Nigel's mother's room. <gasps> oh no, she's found Joe. The girls rushed into her room and found Nigel's mum sitting calmly on a chair, with Joe, the python, coiled up on her knees, having his head stroked affectionately. Oh, sorry for the racket, girls, but there was this horrible mouse, and I just can't abide the nasty little creatures. But this brave young chap intercepted it and dispatched it forthwith. What a fine fellow he is, to be sure. Early the next morning, in the Coast Guard's cabin, Bernie Nelson nervously telephoned Captain Sam Ladd, his sleeping boss, to inform them that he had picked up a now all too familiar signal on the Coast Guard radar. Oh, not again, groaned Sam. Look, forget it, Bernie. This so-called destroyer of is, is, is some kind of technical glitch. What got us into all kinds of troubles yesterday? Just ignore it and ask them techies at Manturi to see if they can fix it. And with that, Captain Sam turned over and tried to catch up with some much-needed sleep. Just a short while later, Benjamin Berkeley, Banania's token homeless person, permanent resident of its jail and occasional street sweeper, was half-heartedly brushing up the inevitable debris caused by almost a whole town, standing around, waiting for a destroyer that never bothered to arrive. Nodding to the sounds pounding through his earbuds and sweeping in time to some good reggae sounds, he failed to notice a, a whooshing, rumbling sound coming from the harbour. His state of blissful ignorance remained until something enormous through a shadow over the whole marina. Cautiously looking up, he stopped in mid-sweep at the imposing sight 
of Her Majesty's destroyer, HMS Diamond, gently nudging the marina wall with a precision that would have been an impressive spectacle if there had been anybody there to witness it. Which sadly, on this particular occasion, there wasn't. That was Banalia. Please subscribe via Apple Podcasts or your favourite podcast provider. And for more information, visit bananiapodcast.com.